Uh, good morning. Uh, today our scripture reading comes from the Gospel of Luke, uh, the 24th chapter. It takes place uh, the day on the day of resurrection, later in the day. Now, on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What are you discussing with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on, but they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed, and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, We're not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us. That same hour, they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, The Lord has risen indeed and has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. It's one thing to have no hope, no sure future, nothing to look forward to. It's another thing to have hope and then lose it, to have a future, have something to look forward to, only to have it snatched away. I suspect it may be even worse to have hope and then lose it, than to never hope at all. I wonder whether there's a lot of that taking place these days. The virus has taken thousands of lives. Um, most of us are staying home all the time with all sorts of consequences, economic, of course, but also emotional and even spiritual Maybe we can learn a thing or two from this story, this old story of two people. One is a man by the name of Cleopas. His companion just might be his wife or a friend. We don't know for sure. We know that they were followers of Jesus. They're heading home to a small place called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, where they've been past several days. Can you imagine 
what they look like right at this moment, their body language, the way they carry themselves. Um, I can imagine them making their way very slowly, not spending much energy. There's not much to pull them forward. What's the hurry? You see, their world has fallen apart. They're reliving the tragedy that has crushed their hope. Not many days before, redemption was so close they could taste it. It seemed that Jesus was the one, the one who would redeem them, who would set them free from the yoke of Rome. A prophet, mighty indeed, more than a prophet, actually, Messiah. So they thought. That's all over now. Everything's come crashing down like a house of cards. Powerful Jewish leaders join forces with even more powerful Romans to do him in. Jesus was condemned to die the most shameful death, crucifixion. No redemption, no hope, just another would-be Messiah brought down like all the others, never to be heard from again. As far as they were concerned, the crucifixion of Jesus meant the end of story, end of their story, the end of hope. And so when a stranger comes along and begins to travel with them, we hear what I would say are the saddest words in the entire Bible. We had hoped. Bad enough to live without hope, even worse to have it and then lose it. We had hoped. Isn't that how it is for so many people these days? A relationship, very promising, falls apart. We had hoped. A career starts off well, doesn't pan out. We had hoped. Vision of a happy family life, destructive conflict sets in. We had hoped. Life doesn't always work out the way we had hoped. We, we had hoped, but that was then, this is now. So back to those two on the road to Emmaus. It must have taken about two or three hours. Two or three hours that changed the course of their lives. Unexpected company. At first, they think it's just another fellow traveler. This mysterious companion surprises them. He asks them, what have you been talking about? And then he takes the broken pieces of their experience and he reassembles them. He gives them a new story, a larger story, a biblical story in which everything fits, even the tragic events that had just taken place in Jerusalem. They thought that God's Messiah would bring about redemption with a mighty act of power putting the Romans in their place. There was no place in their thinking for the defeat of the cross, not at all. But this stranger tells them God's ways are not our ways. God's Messiah saves us through suffering, not from suffering, but through suffering. That's the story you find in Scripture. Jesus fulfills the biblical biblical promises, but in a most unexpected way. He shows them how the pieces fit together, even the terrible things that had happened in Jerusalem. Later, they agreed that their hearts were strangely warmed. That's how it is when the pieces come together again. Oh, now I get it. They get home to Emmaus. Their fellow traveler agrees to stay with them a little longer. But he turns things around. The guest becomes the host. A role reversal. He sits at the table, he takes bread, he blesses it, he breaks it, and then he gives it to them. And then their eyes are opened. They recognize it's Jesus. You see, Jesus had done those exact same things many times before. Previous meals in which he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to them. And now, at their home in Emmaus, he's doing the same thing. That's when they make the connection. 
a light comes on. It's Jesus. Now I get it. So we have this story of what Jesus did long ago on the road to Emmaus. He met these two disciples where they were in the deepest pit, in the place of lost hope. And he brings them out of it in two ways. He gives them a story comprehensive enough and biblical enough to put all the pieces together. Even the suffering of the Messiah fits into the pattern. Second, he meets them at the table. His gracious gestures, his personal presence are unmistakable. The two of them recognize the Lord in the breaking of the bread. So I have the story to tell us what happened then, but it's also the story of what happens now. Because the same risen Lord Jesus is still on the move. He sent the Holy Spirit on a mission to continue his ministry. So it is that the Lord Jesus meets us on the road as he met those two at the very point of our need, right where we are when hope has been lost. Jesus meets us where we are. He uses scripture to change the direction of our lives. He renews our minds through the word, but he also meets us at the table. The risen Lord meets us. He takes, he blesses, he breaks, and he gives. Sadly, though, we often don't recognize the presence of the risen Lord, even when he's right in our midst. We're like Cleopas and his companion. Their eyes were kept from recognizing that it was Jesus. Perhaps our discouragement, our loss of hope, keeps us from seeing reality. Perhaps we're just not paying attention. But here he is. We suffer when we don't realize that Jesus is in our midst. So this story encourages us to be on the lookout. The risen Lord is still active today. Open your eyes. Allow him to renew your mind through the reading and the hearing of the word. Enjoy his presence at the table of the Lord. The Lord Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. He's still doing for us what he did with those disciples on the road to Emmaus. Thanks be to God. Amen.